In this video, we're going to look at some properties of the exponential distribution. This will be useful when we're looking at the times between arrivals in a Poisson process, because they also follow the exponential distribution. So let's start by reminding ourselves of the definition of the exponential distribution. The definition is that T has an exponential distribution uh, with a parameter. We normally call the parameter in the exponential distribution the rate. So T has an exponential distribution with rate lambda, uh, which we tend to write as T twiddles exp with a capital E lambda. If it's PDF, its probability density function is uh, f of t equals lambda e to the minus lambda of t. And that's defined for positive real numbers t. So as a reminder, that's the definition of the exponential distribution. And we use this as a model of like times that you wait for things to happen. Like uh, how long will it be until my light bulb breaks? Or how long will it be until the next bus arrives? Or how long will it be till someone takes money out of their bank account? Or whatever. So what we're going to do in the remainder of this subsection uh, is just remind ourselves, or perhaps see for the first time, a few facts about the exponential distribution. So first fact is, obviously once you've got the PDF, the probability density function, you can also find the CDF, the cumulative distribution function, either by remembering it from last year or by integrating the PDF. And it turns out that that's capital F of T, which you'll remember is the probability it's less than or equal to, is 1 minus e to the minus lambda t. That's easy to prove, or you might remember it from last year. However, it turns out with the exponential distribution, actually it's normally more convenient to look at the upper tail, as in uh, 1 minus f of t, or the probability that t is greater than little t. Turns out that just with the exponential distribution, Dealing with the upper tail turns out to be really convenient loads of the time, where the CDF it just turns out to be a bit awkward. And that's, of course, e to the minus lambda t. But it turns out that actually often when you're trying to prove something about the exponential distribution, try doing the tail probability first rather than the CDF. Often works better. Uh, you might remember, or if you don't remember, it's easy to prove. The expected value is 1 over lambda. Similarly, easy to prove, or you might remember that the variance is 1 over lambda squared. Uh, okay, here's a, here's, an, here's a fact that might well be new to you, so I'll, I'll state it as a theorem rather than just another bullet point, which is if t is exponentially distributed, then it has uh, the following property. Probability t is greater than e plus s given t is greater than t is equal to probability t greater than s. Now let's think for a moment about what that means. So the conditioning is like saying, suppose we've already waited a time little t. And so that's saying, what's the probability we have to wait another time, at least s more time, after having already waited for t? That's the left-hand side. What's the probability we have to wait at least an s more time, given that we've already waited t? And the right-hand side said that's equal to the probability that we just have to wait s more time. In other words, the fact that we've already waited t time is neither here nor there. We still have an exponential distribution left over. So uh, this can be called a sort of memoryless property, right? because it's saying... If you're waiting an exponential amount of time, you've still got an exponential amount of time to wait, no matter how long you've waited so far. So I think it's clear that since we're doing a course here about Markov processes, processes with the Markov memoryless property, I think it's clear that the memoryless property of the exponential distribution is going to be very important in this course, and it will. The exponential distribution will be the most important distribution for the rest of this course. And it's because this has this memoryless property. Um, since we're here, let's prove this. It's not difficult. Let's deal with the left-hand side. The left-hand side is the probability t 
is greater than t plus s given t is greater than t. Well, let's use the definition of conditional probability, right? That's the probability t is greater than t plus s and t is greater than t over the probability that t is greater than t. Well, let's look at the top. If something is bigger than t, then it's all sorry, if something is bigger than t plus s, then it's automatically bigger than t, right? Because t and s are positive. So saying it once you said it's bigger than t plus s, well obviously it's bigger than t, that doesn't even need saying. So we can just leave probability t bigger than t plus s on the top. Probability t is bigger than t at the bottom. But note that what we've written down here are two expressions for that tail probability that we talked about a moment ago, right up here, the upper tail. So this is one of those cases where dealing with the upper tail is most convenient. So on the top we have e to the lambda t plus s, on the bottom we have e to the minus lambda t, uh, but expand them out, the e to the minus lambda t cancels and we get e to the minus lambda s. But that is precisely the tail probability probability t greater than or equal to s, which is what we wanted for the theorem. Sorry, it's greater than, although it doesn't actually make any difference. So we've shown what we wanted, and note how we did it by looking at the upper tail. The upper tail has already uh, proved useful for us. Actually, there's another fact here that we won't need for the moment. For the moment, we're thinking about the Poisson process, and we don't need this result yet. But we will need it later on, and it's about the exponential distribution. So why not? Let's write it down now. This will be useful in uh, towards the end of next week, I think. So, and this is about taking the minimum of exponentials. So let uh, t1 be exponential lambda 1, t2 be exponential lambda 2, and so on. Let's suppose there's n of them, so tn equals exponential lambda n. And let capital T be the minimum of all of these. Be the minimum of T1, T2, Tn. So the way I think about it, this is imagine I've got n alarm clocks, and each of my alarm clocks is my first alarm clock is going to uh, ring after an exponential lambda one amount of time, and my second alarm clock is going to ring after an exponential lambda 2 amount of time, up to my nth alarm clock is going to ring after an exponential lambda n amount of time. And so t is the amount of time until the first alarm clock rings. Okay, and so it turns out that t, the time until the first alarm clock rings, is also exponentially distributed. And its parameter is the sum of all the individual parameters. It's a kind of Interesting fact. Uh, I'm not going to prove that here because you're going to prove it on the problem sheet this week. Uh, you can also ask that what's the probability that like the jth alarm clock is the one that goes off first? Right, so you could also ask what's the probability that the minimum t is equal to tj? The probability the jth alarm clock is the one that rings first. It turns out that also has a convenient expression. It's lambda j over the sum of all these lambdas. So in other words, the probability that a given alarm clock is the one that goes off first is proportional to its own parameter. So again, those two are for you to prove, but that will be a useful fact later on, of course. So now we've learned some useful facts about the exponential distribution, next thing we're going to go on to is how that's related to the Poisson process.